And now, a special Nevertomes presentation. This is future voice actor of JonesSistersComic.com with another Nevertomes reference video for you. Contrary to the pattern I've taken thus far, we're going to go in a different direction this time. Sort of a magical history tour, as it were, going behind the scenes of the Jones Sisters to learn about half of the inspiring force behind them. We've already made clear that the other half is the brainchild of Sir James Barry, so that leaves the brainchild of one Chester Gould, Dick Tracy. Welcome to a special episode of the Nevertones. Now, due to the generational gaps of the topic in question, it will definitely be an Easter egg for some, but for most, it's probably going to be as foreign as trying to do your taxes without the software. <laughs> now that's a scary thought. Before we kick this off, however, let's start off with a little trivia. In 2012, when I started to branch out from my horribly amateurish, panelist comic Random Minds, I took along with it my three favorite creations, Ariella, Bella, and Nicole, and I decided to give them the surname Jones as a reference to my favorite Dick Tracy villain, Flattop Jones, who himself was a parody of real-life killer Pretty Boy Floyd. What led to my giving my characters this particularly common surname was the revelation in 2013 that a character from 1942, not too long before Flattop's debut, was revealed as a cousin of Flattop Jones's after Tracy was covertly kidnapped by Flattop's widow, the African-American knife master Stiletta Jones, a.k.a. Mrs. Flattop, created by Joe Stanton and Mike Curtis. I, like many other fans, suspected that Frizzletop had to be a relative of Flattop Jones based on the pattern of their naming and their quirks, except for the fact that she was always a protagonist in the Dick Tracy comic. Now, I want to make it clear from the get-go that the few characters that play supporting roles in my comic are based off of their counterparts in the original Dick Tracy comic, but they have my own little twist differentiating them from the originals. The actual character of Flattop is never directly referred to or used in my comic, and the characters like Sharptop were given regular names with only their nicknames being used in passing. Frizzletop goes by the name of Susan Jones, though her marriage to Dennis O'Copper is still implied. Sharptop goes by Samuel, but he's not alive in my comic. However, he is a, a spirit tied to Polaris along with his son Randy. To make sure you understand how this all fits, let me share the Dick Tracy canon history of the Jones family with you. In December 1943, after the Laffy Smith storyline came to a grim close, black marketeers hired Flattop as a contract killer to wipe out the shovel-jawed detective once and for all. It wasn't the first time that Tracy had met up with this pretty boy killer, but more on that later. Flattop decided that with such a valuable prize as Mercy, he was now in a position to make far more than just five grand off the kill, so he prolonged Tracy's life and kept him hostage in the city while he turned around and blackmailed the black market boys who hired him, getting them to cough up ten times that much, much to their chagrin. Thankfully, the attempt on Tracy's life failed and Flattop went on the run. Eventually, he was caught and imprisoned after suffering a life-threatening injury to his throat by gunfire. 
the elderly actor who had aided and abetted him earlier in the storyline, Vitamin Flintheart, was also in prison for a misunderstanding with Flat Top's gun. Both of them escaped and hid on the Santa Maria replica in the lagoon. The flat-headed crook tried to swim under the pilings of the ship to evade the raiding cops, only to get wedged in them and drown. But like other villains, to paraphrase Stavros Kassadine from General Hospital, The power did not die with him. It would go on, and Tracy would feel his rage. True to form, Flattop's revenge-seeking relatives would crop up because of how popular the character was. First was Flattop's older brother, Blowtop Jones, who had also had dealings with Vitamin Flintheart. By accident, Flattop Jr., the son of Flattop, wound up in Tracy and Company's crosshairs. However, narrowly, after narrowly escaping, was driven insane by the spirit of a girl he murdered clinging to his throat, becoming unhinged and emaciated in the process. Later, he was shot in self-defense by a policewoman in Tracy's squad, newcomer Liz Worthington, after she stumbled upon his hiding place. Nearly 20 years after Flattop Jr.'s demise, then another would come out of the woodwork, Jr.'s big sister, the daughter of Flattop, Angelica Jones, who wrote a libelous book about her father, claiming his innocence and that it was the police who had murdered him. Her mysterious, unnamed colleague-slash-boyfriend would turn out to be the son of another villain from Tracy's rogues gallery, the Brow, who was a Nazi saboteur. There would be two separate sagas featuring Angel Top and the Brow's son between 1977 and 1981, under the pen of Rick Fletcher and Max Allen Collins, during which time she was presumed dead from a fire and would have her face restored by one Dr. Willis Carver, whom Angel Top paid with a bullet. Like her brother, Angel Top grew unhinged and unstable, causing Brow Jr. to sabotage her ambitions and save their captor Liz Worthington in time to stop an attempt on the lives of Tracy's entire family. Angel Top would later be freed by the relative of another Tracy villain and went into hiding. It was during this turn of events that fans got a one-time glimpse at Flat Top's father, Pop Top, during an investigation to her whereabouts. Angel Top would later resurface in 1986 under the pen of Dick Loker, where she conspired with Quiver Trembley and Prunella LaBoge to destroy Diet Smith's fusion plant with an explosive called Xylon, which their relative and consortium tried to steal in the 1940s, which we will get to in a minute. After being cornered by police after a failed attempt to keep the fusion plant hostage, Angel Top lit some TNT and purposely took her own life rather than be captured. Her last words were to her father. Her son, High Top, would be featured a few years later as a juvenile delinquent turned murderer, and so would Flat Top's other older brother, Sharp Top, whose body was supposedly taken over by Flat Top's deceased spirit. In 1986, it would also be revealed by both Tracy himself and recently declassified documents that Tracy and his then partner, Pat Patton, had met Flat Top, Quiver's uncle, Shaky, and Prunella's grandfather, Pruneface, prior to when they were supposedly to have first met them in the comic. Three rogues were each separate players in an espionage ring, with Pruneface being the lead conspirator, in abducting and blackmailing a patriotic scientist named Rolick Bard, which is drab color spelled back, to recreating his aforementioned Xylon explosive formula for the Axis war machine. Each villain would later meet their demise, but Pruneface took the long way to death by secretly being cryogenically frozen and thawed out in 1983 by fellow Axis scientist Dr. Freeze Dry. Which sums up the actual history of the comic characters, discounting their appearances in the Dick Tracy movie and the now deemed racist UPA cartoon. Oftentimes, when a new artist and or writer comes along on a show or a comic, they tend to spice up the mythos a bit by shaking it up or by totally retconning it. While there were some gaping holes in the continuity of the Xylon plot, it didn't take away from the mystique of the suspenseful flashback. In my Joan sister's mythos, it's a totally different timeline, more like a spin-off fanfic, the details of which we will get to in my next video, and how they all connect with the saga of Flattop Jones and his family. So stay tuned, and be sure to like and subscribe to this video and to my channel.